Increasing body size due to generational change is common knowledge in the automobile world. Taking BMW as an example, the E33 series, which was once all the rage, is about one size smaller than the current one series. The biggest reason why the M2, the youngest of the BMW M models, is viewed with special attention by fans is its size. Unlike the 1 and 2 series, which are front-wheel drive, the M2 is a front-wheel drive model, and is the latest version of a sports sedan reminiscent of the legendary first-generation M3, E30, which was created to compete in touring car races. The current M2 is in its second generation, and of course is equipped with a straight-six engine manufactured by BMW M also, like the previous model. You can choose between AT and MT gearboxes, however, the structure of the AT is different, and while the previous generation had an 8-speed DCT, the current M Stiptronic has an 8-speed torque converter AT. I have somewhat disappointing memories of the previous generation M2 competition, which had a maximum output of 410 PS. The bulging front and rear fenders are full of motivation, and the engine is extremely powerful. It seemed like a sufficiently aggressive car at the public road level. However, when I tried swinging it around on a mini circuit, I couldn't quite get it to oversteer properly. It also felt like the rear tire, which is two sizes thicker than the front, was holding a strong underside. The safety measure of creating an underdriving tendency can be said to be a common method for sports models that turn out more than expected. So what about this time? where much of the body structure was inherited from the M3 slash M4, including the S58 unit that produces 460 PS, I had previously test driven a manual transmission model, so this red test car had an 8 speed at and was just right for me, I think the luxury of deciding between MT or AT is something prospective owners are concerned about, there is no doubt that manual transmission uses the delicious power band of the engine and provides a higher sense of unity with the car. The auto blipper function, which is useful when downshifting, is also a more accurate system in the new M2. However, it may be the torque converter at that is making remarkable progress. Lockup control is quick and doesn't feel like it's slipping, and the reliability and shift speed with the paddle shift are much improved. Also, the manners when starting are completely superior to the DCT. Furthermore, in the case of the new M2, the AT has better fuel efficiency. The fact that M2 has changed back from DCT to torque converter at is proof of this. Is nostalgia the only good thing about empty? As much as I'd like to say that, the finish of the new at M2 was so good, with a style in which the paddles were used only to downshift, it was possible to drive much more accurately than the manual transmission model. The new M2 is also equipped with an app called M Drift Analyzer, so if you choose an app that makes it easier to concentrate on driving than a manual. You can make full use of the electronically controlled LSD and 10 step adjustable traction control to swing around to your heart's content on the drift course. I'm sure you'll enjoy it even more. Compared to the new M2's performance, I think it's just a trivial thing to look forward to. Like the heel and toe look so beautiful.